The Shadow Attorney General, Emily Thornberry, who I'm say, delighted to say uh, can join us uh, now. Uh, Emily Thornberry, a very good morning, good morning to Andy. you. The sun is shining. Um, you have got some fantastic, yeah. some really interesting stuff I want to talk about um, today. Analysis by the Labour Party shows that uh, so many households right across the UK, uh, people who are, who are struggling with all this controversy about the interest rates uh, coming in, but apparently people are paying thousands of pounds more on new mortgages just because they live in the UK. Why, why is that? Tell us more. That's right, Eamon. I mean, it goes up to about £2,000 difference between us and the French, £1,000 compared to the Irish, and so it goes on, 800 compared to the Germans. And although Rishi Sunak keeps telling us that interest rates are high around the world, basically what's happening is that the British mortgage payer is paying more for their mortgage than most other countries around the world. So, as you say, what, why is this? We would say the reason is a simple one, which is that the economy is a mess. We have not had any growth. We have not had a government that's been interested in growth particularly. And then on top of that, we've had the Kamikwazi budget, which has caused such terrible problems in the short term for mortgage payers and cost the country a huge amount of money. So it's been a mixture of general incompetence and bumbling along, okay, added to a terrible crisis that we all saw in the autumn. Okay, so if Labour were to... And the government now doesn't seem to have any idea of how to dig ourselves out of it. So if Labour were to come in at the next general election, what would you do to bring down those eye-watering costs of mortgages? So what we would do is we would, I mean, there are, there are two things, right? You've got the Bank of England who has a responsibility for interest rates, and then you have a government that is responsible for ensuring that the economic weather is one which is favourable to all of us. So there are two things that need to be done. So the things that we would be responsible for would be making sure that we have a competent economic team that is making proper decisions in the long-term interests of our country. We need to turn our economy around and we need to start growing. So we need to change our planning system. We need to make sure that we invest in green energy so that there are jobs in the right places, good quality jobs, security when it comes to our energy so that we don't have to answer to Putin anymore for our energy and we can create our own GB energy at home. And we need to make sure that we have always at the forefront of our mind is that Britain has huge potential and we need to unleash it and we need to stop holding our country back and go for it. Yeah, tell you who's going for it, the Prince of Wales, Prince William. Uh, today, he's announced this, um, this campaign. It's more than a campaign. He says it's his life's work to eradicate homelessness. Now, I think nobody's going to disagree with that. Very laudable. I mean, it would be a very brave politician that would put their neck on the line and say that they could, they could do that. But, but, Emily, we could debate whether you should subsidise mortgages or not. That could go on forever. But they, surely the problem is overall... We simply do not have enough houses in this country, whether social or private. And could I ask you, why do you think that is? I agree with you. We, the reason we have a housing crisis is we don't have enough homes. And so the answer to that is we just simply have to build more. And I think that what we've got is we've got a planning system which has essentially ossified. I mean, it's just kind of died on its feet. We have people making planning decisions who are the people who want to protect what they have. What we don't have is we don't have youngsters in the gallery who are the, you know, in the public gallery watching councils making these decisions, actually influencing decisions that are made because it is for a younger generation that we need to be building homes. And we need to be building them in the right places and they need to be affordable. We need to make sure that we get councils together on a regional basis who are given the task of you must provide certain number of homes, they have to be affordable. They can't just be executive homes. We need to have homes for first-time buyers. We need to have homes that are social for people who can't afford to buy. You know, we need to make sure that we have a private rented sector. All of these things are just falling on their feet. And we need to have a government with a bit of vision who's prepared to stick their neck out and go for it. Uh, do, do you think William will get anywhere with this? Oh, I think it's fantastic to, to see the heir to the throne taking this up as his number one.
priority. I think that it disgusts all of us to be in a developed country and for people to be sleeping on the streets. It is something that really gets under people's skin and they can see that it is so unfair. If you don't have anywhere to live, you have no chance in your life. Your life is likely to be shortened and you have no opportunity. You can't get a job without somewhere to live. You can't get someone to live without a job. I mean, this is always, you know, the ongoing problem. So to see the heir to the throne using the power that he has to highlight this issue is fantastic. But what he needs is he needs to have politicians who will back him up. And it's such a shame that this initiative has not essentially come from government, but comes from the heir to the throne, who's able to do a certain amount, but he is limited. He needs to work with a government who puts it as one of their biggest priorities. But you see yourselves as a government in waiting. Will you back him up? Will you back up the Prince of Wales? How are you going to support people on, on mortgages? And also, as you, as you touched upon there, those that are renting and struggling to afford those costs? Yeah. So the way that we support them, as I say, is by, un by, by, by getting rid of the things which are in the way of the planning, dis planning system so that we're able to make sure that there are more homes being built. In the end, that's, all, you know, that's the most important thing that we can do to solve the ha housing crisis. Because as, you, as you've alluded to, it isn't just people paying mortgages who are, who, are, who are really in trouble. There's also people in the private rented market who are also were seeing their rents go up because as their landlords have to increase the amount of money they're paying towards their mortgages, they're getting the money from the tenants. So it's everybody who is suffering as a result, apart from a small minority of people who are fortunate enough to have bought their homes and who don't have a mortgage now. But we need to have, we need to look down the generations and see just how much people are, are suffering in their 40s, 30s, 20s, who simply either can't get onto the, onto the, the, the housing ladder or cannot afford to pay their rent. Shadow Attorney General, thank you for your views. Thank you for highlighting that discrepancy on uh, mortgages all around um, Europe. And uh, we say thank you to you. We ask people to get in touch with us today about what they think. Uh, Emily Thornberry pointing out that you pay uh, £2,000 more per year uh, in the UK than in France for a mortgage, over a £1,000 more in, uh, than they pay in Ireland and Belgium. Uh, mortgage holders in Germany and the Netherlands will pay around £800 less than families in the UK. Where is the rip-off happening and why does it always seem to happen to us? Yeah.